Hey, uh, uh, okay, yeah. So, you want to map Tycho. I'm going to assume you know all about metadata and timing and get straight into the object types of Tycho. Don's are the red notes, you hit the inner keys on your keyboard to play them. Cats are the blue notes, you hit the outer keys on your keyboard to play them. Finishers are larger versions of these notes where you hit two keys instead of one to play them. Sliders or drum rolls are these yellow bar things where you mash either key on your keyboard to play them. Spinners are these icon things where you mash doll and cat consecutively to play them until the number in the middle runs out. You can switch between these object types in the editor by pressing the 1, 2, 3, and 4 keys. You can switch between cats and dons while in the circle option by pressing R, and between finishes and non-finishes using E, although these don't show up in the timeline above. Okay, so now you know how to place the notes in the editor. Where do you place them according to the music? Tycho mapping is based entirely on pitch. High pitches are represented by cats, and lower pitches are represented by dots. Finishes, on the other hand, are used for emphasis on sounds with more intensity, mainly during cymbal crashes or in the beginning or end of a section in music. Drum rolls are usually used for held notes which can't be improvised otherwise. and spinners are usually used for held notes which change in pitch or have crossfades. Knowing this, let's map a key eye section. Seems pretty good, right? Wrong. It's boring. Improvisation. Having more notes than the actual song is providing. Taika relies on improvisation to keep maps engaged into play. If songs are mapped to represent the music as accurately as possible, it would either be too boring or too complex for the player base to play. It's to the point that mapping completely accurately became the gimmick of one of the most controversial maps ranked of last year. This part of the ranking criteria is where most beginners fail. They don't know how to improvise, and most end up sticking to simple songs to make one or two star maps that represent the music accurately, but avoids improvisation altogether. These maps then end up not getting far into the ranking process because most BNs, as mostly high ranking players, aren't interested in these types of maps. However, improvisation is very simple to learn. All you have to do is play the game. I have an assumption that a number of you got interested in tiger mapping because you heard it was the fastest or the easiest. In Peach Vance's video about Tycho, he said himself that I've never seriously mapped Tycho before. I've never played it even, but I mean, who's to say you need experience playing to know how to create a map? I do. Without actually playing the game, you will have no clue what patterns are and aren't comfortable to play, and in the long run you have no control over the intensity of your map. This ruins flow and limits your creative output in Tycho mapping by a lot. For example, take a look at these two patterns. Can you tell which one is more comfortable? Or take a look at this. Or even this. If you can't tell, learn. Learn what is and isn't comfortable by playing the game mode for yourself. Much like how beginner mappers in standard are told to feel through their maps throughout the whole mapping process, you should have the ability to feel through your own maps to give yourself the best possible chance of making something that plays well. If you can tell, great. You have a head start in tackle mapping and can get in straight away. If you are able to play your own maps, you'll have a great sense of judgement when it comes to flow and intensity, which will aid your improvisation skill greatly. If you're still having trouble though, study other maps and see what makes them click. Like here, take a look at this map and think about why the mapper has mapped it in the way he has. There are some small things to note here, such as the melody being represented by only cats for emphasis here. A long stream here to represent held notes of the piano. And a small rest here to emphasise the introduction of a simple every white tick. But what's most important and something I want to bring attention to is this section.
why is this map so differently from the previous? The simple answer is bass. If you listen closely, the bass drum and the bass guitar stop playing here and the hi-hats and piano take over the song. The drum beat in a song is an essential tool that gives improvisation its structure. The repetitiveness of the drums gives room for improvisation by adding these ad-libs to the beat of the previous section. So, no bass drum means no improvisation, therefore in this section you're left with only the piano being mapped with no improvisation at all. This creates a transition from the previous section to the current one flows smoothly but discreetly. A good way to start improvisation as a beginner is to map the drum beat first. Don should be used for the bass drum, and cat should be used for the snares. This is a good way to know when to put improvisation and when not to, and helps on the accuracy of musical representation. Using this, you can turn this into this. It's important to note that improvisation should be based around the melody of the song. The purpose of improvisation is to emphasize the song itself. For example, take a listen to this song. If you were following solely the drums, it would be a generic 1-3-2-4 pattern. However, the melody of the song has notes and blue ticks, which don't fit this 1-3-2-4 pattern. We improvise around the melody by combining these two and mapping them as doublets. The first cat represents the hi-hats, while the dons represent the melody. Density is a term used to loosely determine the difficulty of a section. High density means there's more notes in a smaller time frame, and vice versa. A calm section of the song shouldn't have the same intensity as a very intense part of the song. Map according to the intensity of the song, and you'll have a clean map that flows well. Most importantly, keep mapping. As you map more and more, you'll soon come to realise that it isn't as hard as you first imagined, and everything I covered here will be nothing more than an afterthought. But until then, good luck, and see you next time. It's not as easy as you think. Uh, just because this is gonna sound so mean. Just because you can go into the editor, pull up a song, and map the notes to it accurately doesn't mean that you have a good map. Um, you have to. It's it's really difficult.